you might be able to make out I've added a load of details. So stick with me and I'll explain what I've been doing. Well, good afternoon everyone and welcome back to Piccadilly Sidings. Now, before I say anything about today's video, just want to thank you all so, so much for watching the last video. And you might think, John, that's a bit of a strange thing to say. It perhaps is, but it's reached over 9,000 views. And I don't normally get the videos <laughs> with 9,000 views. So big thank you to everybody. And obviously that's generated quite a number of subscribers as well. So thank you to you too. And I hope you enjoy the content that this channel will provide for you. Okay, now on to today's video. Now, there's not been a massive amount uh, taken place on the layout over the last couple of weeks, uh, purely because my attentions have to be focused elsewhere at the moment. That's just the way life is. Um, but I have done a few bits and it's more small, detail-y type bits, but we'll go through them one at a time. And then I might even just let you run some, uh, we'll run some steam locos at the end and have a bit of a gala. Um, okay. You might remember in the last video, I made these signs in Tinkercad and then printed them off on the 3D printer. And obviously you can see, I've just put the strips of one mil plastic strip, as I suggested. Now, I'm gonna fit them now. Hopefully this isn't gonna be like teaching grandmother how to suck eggs, if you'll forgive me, but I'm just gonna put one mark like that which is, I'm just gonna put just there. And then I've got a two mil drill bit. Now you might say to me, John, that's that's one mil, that's a one mil um, strand, but across, that's across the flats, the opposite flats, but across the diagonals, it's more than a mil. So I'm using two mil to make okay. sure I get it in exactly the right place. Now I'm going to poke that one in ever so slightly, then I can mark off the other one, just like that, making sure that the holes are in the hole, just like so. Hopefully you can notice I've now put a driver into um, this locomotive here. Now it does need another character inside there, and I'm going to show you how to paint that in a minute, or how I go about painting it anyway. Um, but I've also put them in this one. Now, to get those in there was a little bit of a nightmare because at the end of the day, there is very little space between the gap here, you've got the levers, and it's exactly the same on that side there. So what I ended up having to do was remove the roof. Now the roof does come off. If you prise at the front here, and you do this at your own risk, I must say. I mean, I, I was had to be very careful, but it's only glued down the sides as far as I can ten, sense. So I put the fingernail underneath there and it literally just snapped off, okay? Which enabled me then to get the two characters inside. And I mean, I've got one leaning against this railing here, which I preferred if he was leaning against the windowsill here but there's no way I can physically get him up there. And it's the same that side, you've got that bulk of uh, detailing here on the body side of the, of the locomotive. So it wasn't gonna work. Right, now moving on to the figures then. Now I've got, if you remember from the last time we did this, I had these Dapol figures that you can buy, really cheap. I think they're about seven quid and you get so, so many, but obviously the downside is you've got to paint them yourself. Uh, the, where I start off with, I'm going to start painting the shirt. Now, if you notice, I've done one down here already. So I'm just going to use some white. Now, this just happens to be a Mr. Hobby colour. But again, you choose the colours or the, or the brand and the colours you want. Now, hopefully you can make out that I've also done the tie. Now, I use this brush, which is a 4-0 um, Windsor & Newton brush, but again, it's up to you what brand of brush you use, but the finer the better for those sorts of details and the tiniest amount of paint on the brush, but obviously sufficient enough to draw a line. If, as a little tip, if you're not sure how much to put on the brush, just get a piece of paper and draw a line on the paper. And if it 
draws a, a consistent line, you've got enough. If the line is too thick, you've got too much and try and judge it like that. But I'm looking myself, I'm looking for a line which is just under a mil wide, as you can see that. I've, I've done the shirt, I've done the tie. And the idea is you go right over the top. You, you put too much white on because you can paint over the top with the blue. So once you've done that, it's obviously a case of painting on all the clothing up and around the hands, the neck, trousers. Try not to get it on the other features. Right, next, I'm going to use a skin color, which I'm using this one from the Revel range, um, purely because that's what my local model shop sells. Um, but then it's just a case of dabbing on very gently and hands. Now with hair, I'm going to put two different colours on. All right, so it's literally just a case of putting the darker on, brush most of it off and then literally just go dush, dush, dush over the top of his head and that'll be about it. All right, right on to the next stage. Now I'm going to use a bigger brush. All my brushes are a little bit on the older side, but it uh, doesn't matter. Um, so I've put a bit of white on the brush, whereas the end, there it is. And I'm now going to wipe that off onto a piece of paper to get as much off as I can. And then I'm literally just going to dry brush over the top. And then wipe a bit of that back. The areas where they would get dirty, so the driver would get a bit dirty sort of on his trousers and this guy just a tiny little bit, not much at all really. Okay, so when it comes to removing these, you can literally just snap and twist them off, all right? It doesn't matter there's a little node left on the bottom because we're literally just going to cut it off. Now, you can use a knife or I'm going to use initially a pair of scissors and I'm obviously just cutting up to the edges of his feet. So on. Okay, now I'm going to switch to a knife because I want to go around the back. So I'm literally just going to press through and just remove the bulk. So all I'm doing is removing but I'll zoom in a bit so you can see. Just pressing down to remove the bulk of the piece around from around his feet. And you can still see it's not particularly neat at the moment. So I'm now just going to neaten up those edges. Okay. Then the next stage is to put the foot as flat onto the deck as you can. So obviously this foot is facing that direction. So I turn the model so the foot is flat on its side and then with the knife upright I'm literally just going to cut off a file and go back and forth over the top with the file. All right, just thought I'd show you what I've done with this figure. Um, you may be able to notice I cut his arm away from his body and so it's overlapping the side of the locomotive there. And there, the other hand, I cut the finger off because it was pointing and I've put it on the brake lever. Well, there's a little bit of paint to touch up there. I'll do that in a minute. And I decided to move that figure um, from this side to that side because it give him a little bit more space because they wouldn't be standing on top of each other. But it does look quite, I do quite like the idea of them leaning out the side of the locomotive to see where they're going. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, there's a little bit of uh, cobwebby stuff there and get rid of that as well. <laughs> right. Next, you might notice I've printed off um, with the 3D printer um, a load of these oil drums. Now, there is a wealth of stuff available online and particularly a website called Thingiverse. There's a massive amount of stuff. And if you type in double O or H O, there's literally masses of stuff comes up. It might be useful. It might not be. There are some whole locomotives and carriages and stuff like that. And I found this one, um, which is basically a barrel with a hole in the side. And there is another one, which 
is a very similar type of thing. So you can actually just cut off um, amounts of the barrel. Now they all do seem to have this um, like ribbing. I don't know whether you can make it out. If I show you on this one, yeah. They seem to have this um, sludge down the sides and I don't know quite why, but what it does do is it is, if you put the barrel on its side, it won't roll away. So what I did do is to put three on top of each other, all with that horrible knobbly bit down the side. Now, I'll show you how I go about painting this up. I'm gonna go in with a slightly lighter rust color, which again, this is from Mr. Hobby, and I'm literally just going to dab it over, like so, a little bit on the ends, and then take my water, brush in the water, and I'd normally wipe it off, but then I'm just going to streak it with the water to make it look as if that's running, and then let that dry. All right, so in the meantime, I will get this one to the same stage as that one, and I'll come back to you in a second. Okay, so whilst this one is drying, you can still see it's quite shiny, I'm gonna go on to the next stage, which is, um, I'm gonna use some gray, bringing that in, some administratum gray. And again, quite pale, Not, I'm just putting my brush in the water. So I'm literally just going to put a little bit on, not a massive amount, I mean, that, that probably looks quite a lot. And then take your brush. I've not washed off the water. Literally just go over the top with water and let the water do the work. Just going to use a tiny little bit of red. Just dab it on. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing there. And because the drum is still wet, the water paint or the acrylic that I'm just putting on will just blend in a little bit and if it doesn't just take your brush and just brush over the top of it it's to give a hint of the existing colour right, well hopefully you can see that actually um, I think they do look quite rusted old and very well dilapidated now I did use a very simple similar wash with some orange as I did with the yellow. Um, you might be able to pick it up on that one just there. Now, the last thing to do on these is a tiny bit of white. Oh, sorry about that. And I'm not gonna use much. So just odd little bits here and there, just to highlight certain parts. That's all it's to do. All right, and probably a little tiny streak down one end. Something like that. All right, so I'll just pick that up. Hopefully you can make out what I've just done there. And a little streak down one side. Now this one, I'm leaving as an open top barrel, but barrels don't have that, top, that thickness of top. So what I'm gonna do is do a little visual trick on that. Is, and I'm putting the finger against it, is to try and make it look as if the top is a lot thinner by painting in the inner half of the top, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Right, the next thing I want to show you are these bins. Now I've made these um, on the 3D printer now, they're not brilliant, but at the end of the day, they serve a purpose. Now, you can get one of these off Thingiverse, but the problem being is that it's 55 millimetres tall. And if you try and reduce it, the plastic model or the virtual model has an internal structure, which the 3D printer recognises. And if you reduce it, it destroys the internal structure. So you you're only left with cer certain parts of the model. So in this case, it would be the top, the middle and the bottom. 
and you don't have anything at all in the middle so you end up with a load of string so I've had to make this in Tinkercad so I'll take you over there and just give you a brief idea of what I did in that right this is Tinkercad um, I'm not going to go through how to use it or anything like that I'm just going to show you pretty much what I did now you get these basic tools in the side so this was made up from a number of these which you then make flat as sides so you've got four sides obviously one this side you've got that side and there's two either side of that so I made the bottom section then I made them into rods and it's very easy to do you just adjust the measurements so this was one millimeter square and then I placed those into the corners and then put top on it so again using that item there just make it into a flat block just adjusting the measurements and then there further down there is a pyramid just there which you can then use to create the top as you can see once you've done all that then you can group it together and you'll notice that it goes all the same colour. Now, these bits here were done with the uh, cylinder tool, which I'll take you back up, is this one just here. Again, making it really, really small, flipping it on its side, and then embedding it into the edge. Again, do that twice. I then grouped them, put one this side, then the other side, flipped it round, altered the length, this side, and then this side. And I also put in some lettering, although you can't see what it says um, on the model, that is, but you can clearly see it says litter on this item just here. So I don't know why that hasn't come out as clear as it should, but nevertheless, it's not the end of the world. And... Um, it's to give the impression, really. That's all it's to do. Um, you know, I'm really not that bothered by it. All right, next thing that I've been up to is I, mo I bought these many 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 months ago um well before well i was going to say well before lockdown but actually i started the layout around the lockdown time so it must have been around about march april time when i bought these what I'm going to um, do with these is to uh undercoat them or prime them in halford's white primer because this is brass and i'm not sure how the acrylic will go on this so give them a coat of primer everything should be fine all right i'll be back in a minute As you can see, I've now primed this. Now I'm going to use some of this lemon colour um, because a lot of the signs that I've seen are the yellow is quite pale. I don't know whether the back of these things are yellow or whether they're grey. Now I suspect that they would be the grey or black because the sign isn't meant to be red from the other side right so as you can see now i've painted them all up and we've got the anthracite color on the back um, even if these ended up they're supposed to be yellow on the back to be quite honest with you i don't really care um that's the way i'm going to do it and you know so it's no point in even mentioning it to be honest with you i won't necessarily change it um, now i am going to rust up a few of these um, some are going to have a minor amount of rust on, some are going to have um, a substantial amount of rust on. Um, so I'm going to use the darker of the two colours first of all. Now I'm going to use the two 15s um, coming into the yard and the 50 going out over the bridge and the 20 and the 25 going through the station at both ends. 
Um, not sure I should use the tens or the seven or the seventy. I won't use the seventy, so I can actually go overboard with the seventy. So I'm just going to put on dob it on just as I did before and then water it down so you get this runoff type effect okay and on the back of the 71 again all the way down like so like that obviously let that dry but now i'm just going to put on odd little bits here and there actually that looks a bit diseased so i'm just going to do that just to give the impression don't want too much on some of these but just a little bit right so there we go now i've started cutting some of this lot out um, so all i suggest you do is just run along the edge just pressing down with a knife. It is a little bit on the tricky side, but as long as you're careful. The thing that I've discovered is you try to make sure that you do a clean cut because what happens is they, they bend very easily. And, uh, you know, obviously if they bend, it might not be incredibly easy to straighten them out again. But, uh, there you go, a white dabbed on. Now those are not, the these ones are going into service, the 10 mile an hour ones, I think I said that. Um, where's the 70? Uh, there's the 70. That's probably the most decayed. And the back of it as well as far more rusty as well. So that's, they're just gonna be dumped on the side of the track. Um, there is a little bit of residue actually, or, so I'm just going to snip those off with the scissors. Should be all right. And then obviously you just need to touch up a little bit just there, which is quite easy to do. And it's just a case of dumping them out on the side of the track. And um, all, right. oh, all the arrows, by the way, um, these little arrows need to be stuck to the side or to the front of them to indicate which side of which track either side of them they're pointing to but i need to work that out and then um, i'll stick them on probably with some you who are coming into shot now some of that okay right so i'll see you in a minute right now I'm going to stick this one just here. So in through there like that. And then that will just go into the board as appropriate. And I'll put a little double glue on that. Incidentally, if these are not in the right place, um, like I said, I really don't care. Um, I'm gonna put them where I think is gonna be the most appropriate. I did ask advice about the signals but these I'm just gonna guess.
Well, I bet you're wondering what's going on here, aren't you? Well, the local people have come down in their droves, as you can see. All the little plastic people have gathered on Piccadilly siding station because there is a special train coming through. They know what it is and they have gone as white as a sheet. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. I wonder what it could it be? Hark! I hear it coming. I hear it coming. <gasps> no! It's Stevenson's rocket! It's come to Piccadilly sidings. Wow. Right, let's just take a moment to just enjoy this particular locomotive as it sits in Piccadilly sidings. Yes. What a, oh, what's going on here? Oh, great. Well, it had to happen, didn't it? Had to be photobombed. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And we'll just have a quick look at all the different things that have taken place in this video. So if you remember, we started off by looking at the different signs that have gone on. So I'll just focus in on the one particular sign there. We've got a double sided sign just there. And there's another one over there if you haven't spotted it okay we also noticed that we have got some new litter bins which is one there and one just there we have got some people on the ground now or a person i should say in the name of ben who's changing the point and he is a bit um he is a very brave because when the 66 or the long vehicles go round this corner here, he is incredibly close to the train and I'm sure that his boss is going to have something to say about that. But we've also got the um, guard type figure or the station master type figures standing there. That's the boss just there. And we have also got some barrels which are not finally positioned yet but they'll do there just for the time being and some speed signs and as we come over to this side we have got some more speed signs just here and a couple more barrels there oh and there's some more speed signs on the track actually i didn't show you those ones did i but we've got one just there there's a couple just there and actually if you look very gently i know it's on the tilt but you'll just notice one just down in there now as i said to you before i really don't care if they're not in the right place but this is where i've decided to put them and you know it's my layout okay right anyway well i thought i'd come around to the other side so at least you get a front look at this locomotive if nothing else but uh um, we'll, we'll finish the video there. I hope you've enjoyed it. The first video that's going to appear at the top of your screen is going to be the last one which I did on the channel, which was some more modifications. There was the new 108, if you remember that. I did some mods to that and also some other bits and bobs around the layout too. So that will be the top video. And the second video I think is going to be all about that rusty bridge. Take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon.